merciful and compassionate Father. We confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health and mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Oh,
<coughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Christ our Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. And good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. We come before the Lord today, opening our hearts to his goodness and his love. Uh, the readings of the Mass, the theme seems to flow along the lines of call, the way the Lord invites people to be part of what he is all about and what he's doing. And uh, we have the very beautiful passage in Luke on the call of Peter, which I think is worth reflecting on because all of us are called, all of us are being sent by the Lord. And we can learn, I think, a certain amount from the way Peter is called in that passage. We come before the Lord always recognizing that we need his mercy, his strength, his healing. And so we take a moment as we begin our Mass to invite him to really come and touch us with his merciful love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners like us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're with the Father, always interceding for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O Lord, keep your family safe with unfailing care, so that relying only on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from, from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with a train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were, sa were stationed above. They cried one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Oh, it's me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. 
in the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called you, when I called you, answered me. You built up strength within me. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, after that, he appeared no more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one abnormally born, he appeared to me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon Peter, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then Jesus sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats with fish so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the great mysteries about God is why 
when he really doesn't need any one of us, why he still desires to extend and achieve his saving plan through people, through us. God wants to work through people. And this is, this is quite clear from the way the Old Testament unfolds in people like uh, Abraham and Moses, David, Isaiah, the prophets. It's also reflected in the way Jesus begins his own ministry. Because from the very start, he begins to call those who will work with him. He will be, they will be sent out by him. And ultimately, when he ascends back to the Father, they will embody him in the mission of the Father and Christ. All the Gospels put the call of the disciples right at the start. Mark, followed by Matthew, has a rather cut and dry calling of Jesus' key collaborators. Jesus walks along the lake. He spots Peter, James, and John. He asks them to follow him. They drop everything, they go with Jesus. Matthew and Mark really are introducing Jesus' ministry at that point. They're trying to tell the various things, what he preaches, what he does, how he operates. Uh, and they make the point that he will have companions. He will have people with him. It's part of his identity. It's how he will do things. It's how God will do things. When we come to Luke and then later on in John, they do more than just make the point that Jesus is going to have companions. Their call accounts develop much more strikingly the process, the process that was part of being called. And I think that process is very good to look at because really being called and missioned is something that each of us will encounter. God wants each of us to share what he is about, to be disciples who embody the Lord's presence and intentions in our own situations, where we are placed, no less than Peter, James, and John did for theirs. If we look at Luke, the Luke's call of Peter, it moves through different stages. First of all, Peter has to let the Lord into his life. It's been a difficult night. Lots of work, no fish. Now they're drying their nets before going home to sleep. And then along comes this Jesus who wants to use Peter's boat and speak to the crowd that is gathering there. How easy it would have been, even expected, if Peter had said to Jesus, go look for another boat. We're too tired. We're too frustrated. Just want to get out of here and go home. That would have been the common reaction. And many of us can miss God's coming into our lives because we get too preoccupied with work or people, entertainment, worries, sorrows. We don't even give God a chance to get into our boat let alone engage us in mission. But Peter, Peter opens the door. He lets Jesus into the boat and into his life. And as Peter listens to Christ speaking, he begins to get a deeper sense of this person. And this opens the way to the next step, to go beyond where Peter was comfortable and familiar go out into the deeper waters, get ready to fish, let down the nets. Oh, come on, Jesus, you're a carpenter, you're not a fisherman. We don't fish during the day. And on that, go out into that part, we don't fish on that side of the boat. There are no fish there, we tried all night, we got nothing. That would have been the natural reaction. But because Peter had led Christ into his life, because he had started to listen to the Lord, something more happens. Sure, 
This doesn't make sense. But at your word, I will lower the nets. And look what happens at your word. Two boats practically sinking with the fish that they catch. I think this is what happens in our lives too. It's, it's one thing to let God into our boats. It's another thing to realize that the Lord is real. Not just a, a great cosmic thought or a picture card of God. but He's one who's going to interact with us and share his heart and mission with us. And this will, time and again, involve an invitation to go out into the deep, go beyond where we're content and comfortable. And the only reason we will be able to do that is because we have faith and trust in the one who invites us. At your word, at your word. Isn't that what Mary said to, let it be done to me according to your word? We might not catch a boatload of fish like Peter, but in one way or another, our faith and our willingness to act on it will, like in the case of Mary, make God more present in our lives and in our world. But there's one other moment in that story that's very important with Peter that we shouldn't miss. Caught up in the wonder of God's presence in the miraculous catch of fish, Peter's natural reaction again is to back away. Leave me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. You don't want me to be part of what you're doing. Isn't this so often the way we respond to God's call to go beyond where we are? I can't do it. I don't have what it takes. Uh, Someone else, maybe. It was a typical Old Testament response of Moses and the prophets. I don't know how to speak. Or, I'm too young. Or, as Isaiah says this morning, my lips are unworthy of the message you're going to have me proclaim. This can be a major block to being part of God's mission. I do not trust myself. But that's precisely the point. We're not meant to trust ourselves. It's God who calls and God who will be with those who respond. God who will be doing his work in us. Not trusting ourselves is a call call to trust God more. And God's reply, Jesus' reply to Peter is always the same. Don't be afraid. And as Mark's call story better puts it, better than the way Luke says, Luke says, you will become fishers of men. Luke, uh, Mark and the other in the verse this before the gospel said, uh, follow me, I will make you fishers of people. Follow me, I, that very central into the whole process. And Peter responds correctly, bringing the boats to land, they left everything and followed Jesus. It's a, it's a lovely vocation story and certainly applicable to many vocation choices. But I think the dynamic involved here is something ongoing. Uh, it applies to all of us because we, are all, we all have to, to deal with a living Lord who is always inviting us to be part of something more, part of his mission. And if we are going to share in the desires of God's heart, we will, like Peter, have to make room for God in our lives. We'll have to be willing to go beyond what is familiar and comfortable. We'll have to recognize that it is not our work, but the Lord's. And that the Lord can make wonderful things happen even if we are not perfect, 
so long as we're ready to trust that he works in and with us. So as we go on with our Mass this morning, as we continue to reflect on time, ordinary time, maybe pray to St. Peter that he may teach us, inspire us, how to, to give ourselves fully and without fear to the call of the living Lord who will continue to enter into our lives if only we will let him. Let us continue our Mass and then renew our faith in the Lord. We'll use the Apostles' Creed again. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. hell. On, the On the third day, day He rose again from the dead. dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray to our Heavenly Father that we may live and celebrate the love we profess so that we may be known as disciples of Christ. And with humble hearts we pray, Lord, let your love shine in us, on us. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine, shine on us. us. For the church and civil authorities, may the Lord fill them with a strong and unselfish love, that they may pursue justice and peace for all, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine, shine on, on us. For those who are unable to love because they have been badly hurt, may the Lord heal their wounds so that they may experience the happiness of loving and being loved in return, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love, love shine on us. For priestly and religious vocation, may the Lord inspire more young men and women to follow him through, his, through this vocation of love and, and total self-giving, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine us. on us. For those who suffer pain, illness, or disease, especially from the COVID-19 virus, may the Lord restore their health and turn the anxiety of their families into joy, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine, shine on us. us. For departed loved ones, may they experience great joy in the loving embrace of the Lord, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine on us. For those celebrating their birthdays, Sister Volet Kalingasan, Frankie Roman, Susan Huko, Ken Uiguanco, Ramon de Dios, Dex Fernandez, Florence Meneses, Annie Lim, Donna Perez, Christina Ramos, and Isabel Magno, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your love, love shine on us. For the healing of Aga Camarata, Theodore Wee, Alessandra J. Tan, Remedios Villena, Henry Tan, Aina Lacson, Jimmy Apalit, and Alan Matutina, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine, shine on us. For the repose of the souls of Lucita Bancaya, Jebeline de los Santos, Gomez Tan, Rodrigo Nases, Sito Padilla, and Jose P. Lim Jr., we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine on us. For the special intentions of Ato Ignacio, Jeron Gabriel Sandico Season, Lisa Halandoni and family, Marivic and Fritz Ocampo, Butch and Nelia Nazareno, JP and Bar Examinees, we pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine on us. And for all the intentions sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan. We pray. Lord, Lord let, let your, your love shine on us. Loving Father, you have chosen us in Christ to be your faithful people despite our sinfulness. 
May our prayers and love for each other bring us closer to you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer from our earth. May it become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer from our earth. May it become for us the cup of eternal salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for a good and a good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, you once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty. Grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with all the angels and saints and all the hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are indeed holy, the fount of all holiness. All you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the working, power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. Since you never stop gathering a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And so, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we bring to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said, the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new, the eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
And so, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, look, we pray, on the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, St. Peter, and all the saints at whose, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Esther, our Bishop, all the bishops, clergy, all the people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the fam prayers of the family you have gathered here today. In your mercy and compassion, O oh Father, gather to yourself all your children were scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 As God's holy people, then we turn to our loving Father and pray the way Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, our Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be, done be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity that you so much want, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And, and with, with your you. spirit. We offer each other a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is Jesus the Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to his holy meal. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, you willed that we be sharers in the one bread and the one cup. Grant us, we pray, that we so live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning or this afternoon, this evening. Uh, we ask the Lord to continue to work in our lives and keep us open to the way he calls us and realize that, uh, like Peter, it's a long journey. And when Peter went with Christ, that wasn't the, start, the end of it all. It continued to go on, and he had to make many, many more listenings and choices and being willing to let the Lord lead him. And I think that's what all of us will be in dealing with. So we ask continually for that grace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Crap.